Okay, all right. I've never done anything like this before. Um, yeah, so... I originally said that I wasn't going to talk about the Hero Pass, like, at all, because I didn't really care. I got on, I checked it out. It's a battle pass. It's the same exact type of stupid battle pass you see everywhere. So I didn't see what the big deal was, and I left. Um, but the community is, you know, rightfully so, in a bit of an uproar over this whole thing. And I, screw it. So I'm in here. I'm in my recording booth. I don't have any kind of script. I'm going completely off the top of my head. I've never done anything like this before. I don't even know if this is going to see the light of day. But yeah, I'm here. I'm going to talk about the damn battle pass. So let's get started. So at around this point, I'd probably go over what the Hero Pass is, blah, 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 what the update is, what Jagex has been doing. But I'm late to the party. Everybody else and their mother has already repeated the exact same beats over and over about what it is. If you want to know what it is in detail, just go watch their videos or just read the damn news post or just log in. It's right there. Um, anyway, so I'm not going to be talking about any of that. What do I think of the Hero Pass? Um, it's... How do I put this? It's okay in concept, but as in typical Jagex fashion, it's pretty bad in execution. I always thought Yak Track was stupid and one of the most predatory, obnoxious battle passes you I've ever seen in any game ever outside of the battle pass in Enlisted um, and War Thunder. So, there you go. Like, I mean, it's not the worst battle pass in the world. You know, at least Gaijin's got Jagex beat there. But I didn't like how much the game forced you to go out of your way to progress. The fact that each tier took longer than the previous. That's literally... What battle pass does that? None. None. There are none. There, I have not played a single battle pass where it just gets arbitrarily harder as you go for no reason. Um... Even Call of Duty, like, you know, Activision bad. People people freaking hate how predatory Activision is and how much they try to milk their player base. Even Call of Duty's Battle Pass stays the exact same difficulty from beginning to end. It doesn't just get harder for no reason. Um, but Yak Track did. You'd start like, oh, burn 100 logs. And they could be any logs you want. And by the time you're around to level 50, it's bur burn 4,000 logs, and they can only be magic logs or elder logs. Good luck, bitch. Like, that's... <laughs> Who thought that was okay? And, sure, they, they, they started to change it up with, like, oh, well, you can, you know, we've added a second challenge that's just... It'll always be skill and kill. And skill and kill gets progress... It, it, no matter what you're doing, like in like a set time interval of every five minutes, it'll progress by one. But still, they continued to make it worse because each skill and kill required more and more time to complete, which was stupid. <laughs> it was, it was dumb. I hated it. So I'm glad that's gone. For context, the Hero Pass doesn't do that. From 1 to 99, the amount of time it takes to progress is consistent. It jumps up from 100 to 120, but um, there really isn't anything there. There's, like, some bonus things. It's kind of like the... Um, uh, I forgot what pass does it. There's a couple of battle passes out there where if it's, like, if you complete them, you get, like, these harder... You get, or you get like, this recurring... Uh, task that just gives you like a little bit of some sort of incentive every time you complete it until the battle pass ends for that season or whatever. It's pretty much like that. And to be frank, I don't really care. Um, because even 5,000 hero points to get from one level compared to 1,000 seems easier than trying to get from like level 40 to 41 on the Yak Track. Like, it's just, it's still an improvement to me. But this is all functional stuff. I'm talking about functional stuff here. Functionally, the hero pass is fine. The way it actually works, the way you actually progress is overall fine. But that's not the problem people have. The problem people have is these stupid buffs that they decided to add to it. And three of them overall are fine. Actually, they're pretty pathetic. Um, three of the buffs are fine, so we're not going to talk about those. It's the other two buffs. One of them is, oh, and, and for context, you get 
uh, charges to these buffs all throughout the pass. So like, oh, at level 35, you'll get 12 charges to the clue scroll, pa- uh, the clue scroll buff. And so you'll be able to use it 12 times. And what is the clue scroll buff? Well, the clue scroll buff makes it so that uh, your clue scrolls have one less step to complete. So it's the same thing as the treasure totem, except it stacks with the treasure totem. And it stacks with Luck of the Dwarves. So it can get pretty insane. And it's a very substantial buff. Like, um, to the level of, oh, I don't want to do clue scrolls until I have more of these charges available. It seems like a waste of time to do clue scrolls unless I have these charges. Because, well, spoilers, it is literally a waste of time now. Um, so that's insane. And the other one is not as bad, but still sets a bad precedent, and that's um, Elite Dungeons 4, uh, Zamorax Dungeon, gives you have a 20% damage reduction while doing full runs on that dungeon. And so, on one, on one hand, kind of neat. People who were already, like, farming Zamorak and pushing high in rages and stuff, this isn't really going to do anything for them, especially since uh, if you use it, it nullifies any personal personal best records or anything that could be triggered on high scores in any way. It completely nullifies that. You're not, uh, you know, so you're not really, like, cheating, but um, it's a bit of an incentive for people who are trying to do their 25 runs so they can unlock the just the Zamorak fight or incentivize people who have not done it at all to give it a shot, right? So, on that aspect, cool, fine. The problem is, is does it stop there? And the answer is hell no. I mean, this is literally just the first iteration of the pass, and everybody is rightfully concerned that the buffs are just going to get stronger and stronger. How long until now it's a 20% damage buff at at uh, Elite Dungeons 4? Or, you know, triple drop rate, or whatever, you know? Um, and there's nothing to say that that won't happen. There's, because there's no precedent. This is just, this just started. Jagex can state over and over and over again that we do not um, uh, plan to introduce some sort of power creep to the Hero Pass... But why would anyone believe them? Why would anybody believe you? I They have no incentive to believe you. The only thing they have going is that y- you just won't. And who knows? I, there's been no... There's been no precedent for that. Treasure Hunter, since its inception, has gotten worse. Um, the Yak Track, since its inception, got worse worse it didn't use it didn't initially if i remember correctly it didn't initially give you experience bonuses uh, buffs but then they added that then they added the stupid yak sack things that gave, added more fomo and more potentials to make a bunch of money by dumping either cat real world cash or time into the yak track to get these stupid things and they were rng focused so if every single iteration of microtransactions that Jagex has ever introduced into this game have progressively gotten worse over time, why would anybody believe that the buffs in the Hero Pass would stay consistent? They wouldn't. So I understand that. Like, at a face at, at face value, the, the Zamorak buff really doesn't seem that bad. And a lot of people agree. Um, well, a lot of people I talk to, I don't... Reddit's a clusterfuck um it's insane over there i've been just trying my best to ignore it twitter's not that much different but amongst the content creators i've been talking to it's not that bad but only if it stays like that if season two's hero pass is just another buff that is different but of a similar power scale to this current elite dungeons 4 buff then fine but if, you know, Battle Pass Season 5 is something more insane or just slightly stronger, and then Season 6 is just slightly stronger than that, we're in trouble. Um, so I understand people's concern. Anyway, enough about that. That's, that's, those are really the big things that piss people off. Oh, uh, actually, no. Sorry, there is one more. The other thing that pisses people off is something that I just don't understand at all. I don't agree with it at all. But... Everybody has their own way of playing the game, I understand that. And it's the uh, removal of daily challenges. So, 
They removed daily challenges, including all the streak rewards, which would give you things like Metafy gift offerings, death touch darts, gifts to the Reaper, uh, I don't know, anima, uh, shattered anima stuff, all, all kinds of little things, right? Uh, daily reset tokens, aura resets, uh, all that, all that, all those goodies, all those goodies. Anyway, and you know, a good chunk of experience. So much so that there are Iron Men who have gone from 1 to 99 Dungeoneering or 1 to 99 Herblore almost entirely through daily challenges. And, um, well, I'll get to that in a second, but they removed that. They replaced it with a daily challenge system that takes longer to do, considerably longer to do. And the only thing it offers is progress on the Battle Pass. Now, the Battle Pass, all scattered throughout it, has these reward items called satchels, and you open the satchel, and it'll give you a random item. And the items are a lot of uh, a lot of the same things that you would get from the streak rewards for the old daily system. So the gifts of the Reaper, the Anima, uh, Menify gift offerings, Death Touch darts are conveniently not on it, um, and then some other you know new things that I I don't personally really care about, but. So that's that's kind of what they replace it with. The big the big complaint is that it is now a lot more effort for a lot less in return. And Iron Men specifically don't get anything from this. They get oddments. Why is that a problem? Well, because the oddment store hasn't been updated in so long that there are Iron Men sitting on hundreds of thousands and even millions of oddments with nothing to do with them. There is nothing to do with these oddments, and I understand that. For a lot of the oddment stores, completely disabled for Iron Man. A lot of the stuff you you would, uh, a lot of the recurring expenses with oddments, like uh, keys, protein packs, lamps, stuff like that. Iron Man can't get that, so they don't have a constant sink for oddments. All they have access to are cosmetics, and there hasn't been any cosmetics added to this shop in a long time. So the Oddman store for Iron Man specifically is useless. So for Iron Man, this entire daily task thing was just a flat nerf. They just had daily tasks taken away from them, and nothing was given back in return. So that leads to my personal opinion on this, and that is I don't care. Um, I don't like daily tasks. I don't like the daily challenges. I always thought they were busted. Um, when I started doing them on my Desert Only account, it was right before they changed them to the current system. Prior to that, it was a system where it, uh, the, the daily challenge system was much more specific, and its rewards were a lot uh, a lot more understated. So you would say, um, let's say the game would have you go cut 10 magic logs. Okay, go, you go, you cut 10 magic logs. It then wanted you to take those 10 magic logs and give them to the daily task person, and they would give you a chunk of woodcutting experience for completing your daily task, and a satchel that gave you the equivalent, like the, the, the GP equivalent to those materials that you just handed in as materials in a different skill. So maybe you would get some fish or some ore or something like that. This system didn't bother me that much, but I also didn't really get to interact with it a whole lot um, before it was changed, at least as an Iron Man. I, I, I interacted with it a few times as a main account, but for a main account, those, those resources didn't really matter. I didn't really care, so I didn't do it that much either. The new system, I honest to God almost banned it on my account because I thought the idea of getting things like death touch darts was just busted. And, of course, th those daily challenges just hand out experience. They just, it's just, like I said, people have been getting... 99 herb lore, dungeoneering, any skill that is mildly, even mildly inconvenient to train as an Iron Man. They were using daily tasks to skip a great portion of that grind. And um, I don't know about you. Again, everybody plays this game the way they want to play, but that seems completely out, out of what uh, an Iron Man is even supposed to be. It if an Iron Man is supposed to be to avoid MTX, to avoid trading with other players, to avoid handouts and outside influences affecting your account, then why are you okay with a daily challenge that makes it so you just don't even train the damn skill? And I understand that Dungeoneering, specifically, 
is out of date, maybe not that fun to engage with, um, and not not really that useful. But the same cannot be said for Herblore. And the same cannot be said for a lot of skills. And also, I mean, that's just what you do when you, you sign up for an Iron Man account. You do it yourself. Why are you letting daily challenges do it all for you? So, personally... <laughs> You're going to hate me for this. Personally, I don't mind the daily task nerf at all. I really, really don't. Um, my main issue is how many microtransactions are really in this game at this point? There's, there's so many. Just off the top of my head, uh, let, me just, let me just try to list it all. All the different ways that they monetize this game. Monthly membership. Premier Club, which I'm going to go ahead and say is separate because Premier Club offers a bunch of extra rewards on top of it. It's like a membership plus, especially with the way Hero Pass works in that the premium track is only accessible by either buying it with bonds or having Premier Club. So it's its own thing. So you have membership, you have Premier Club, you have Treasure Hunter, you have Solomon's General Store with rune coins, uh, you have the Hero Pass, you have Rune Metrics Pro. They locked experience per they, they they locked experience per hour trackers and damage per minute trackers behind microtransactions and drop logs behind microtransactions things that are core functions of MMOs are a something you have to pay for uh what else there is other things um expanding back into to Solomon's general store bank boosters are included in there. Extra ability bars are included in there. What other game can you think? I'm sure there's. I'm sure there's probably one out there somewhere. Let me know in the comments. But what other game can you think of that locks how many ability bars you can have behind microtransactions? I can't think of any. I. I mean, I. I've played a few MMOs. I haven't played them all, obviously, but I can't think of any. And if there are any, I'd imagine they're probably freemium uh, mobile games. And where stuff like that makes sense. But you got to remember, you're also paying a goddamn membership on top of all this. Um, oh, and on top of all of that, unlike most other MMOs, you get one character per subscription. You go play, uh, you go play Final Fantasy 14, you go play World of Warcraft, you go play, um, hell, I think even Albion Online, and you get multiple characters on a subscription. RuneScape, you get one. Now, I was kind of hoping the Jagex account would lead into this whole multiple characters under one subscription thing. And uh, s currently, it's like halfway there. Like, there's, it's multiple characters under one account, which is a start. But you still have to pay for each of them separately. And it's not cheap. It's $12 a month with no, in with, with no inclination that it won't go up more because it's already gone up several times. For context, I pay six ninety five a month because that's how much it was when I started paying for membership, and it used to be five dollars before that. So it's gone up over double um, since its inception. And granted, twenty years ago, so like inflation, whatever. But on top of everything else that they charge for, it's egregious. So if you want the Hero Pass to do well, functionally, it's fine. Like the way it works in concept is fine. I find it as an improvement over Yak Track. The buffs need to be addressed. They need to be looked at. You cannot, you cannot be dropping things in here that are too powerful, that directly affect things like PVM um, or, or bossing and, and stuff like that, where, where you have like a, well, I can't, I can't boss today because, um, I, I ran out of, I ran out of bossing buffs that, that doubles my drop rate. So I'm going to have to wait until tomorrow when I get 12 more of those, and then I'll do some bosses. That can't happen. You'll kill your goddamn game. You will absolutely murder your game. But on top of that, some of these microtransaction systems, they need to go. There needs to be less monetization systems in this game. If you want any one of those monetization systems to succeed, there needs to be less of them overall. Get rid of Treasure Hunter. It's an outdated system. Most games, unless you're some cracked-out addict-driven uh, addict MMO on a, on a mobile platform, those are on their way out. You, you Move on. Let it go. It doesn't do anything like it doesn't do anything productive you've already gotten rid of the free daily keys for a lot of players or want to get rid of them 
it just treasure hunter needs to go and don't replace it with anything else. The daily keys, free keys, the just the whole spinning to winning, all that shit, gone. You can monetize this game on membership and a and a battle pass. There are so many other games that do it. There are so many other games that do it that charge less, and they're they they charge less. They they go after your wallet less. Um, and this is kind of the problem with me not having a script because there's a word at the tip of my tongue that I want to use to describe this, and I can't think of what it is, but. You get the point. Get rid of Treasure Hunter. Uh, furthermore, get rid of oddments. I don't... So, oddments are weird. Why not just use rune coins for this? Um, we have this problem where there's like 80,000 different premium currencies in the game, and oddments just don't seem like they matter. Get rid of them. Get rid of oddments and replace their functionality with rune coins. Put ev everything in the oddments store, move it to Solomon's. Uh... And, you know, make it all purchasable with rune coins. That includes the, the, the keys, the protians, the lamps, whatever, at an appropriate price. When Iron Men get oddments in the game currently, give them an equivalent amount of rune coins instead. When, uh, when Iron Men get oddments on the damn battle pass, give them rune coins instead. Furthermore, replace some of the rewards. Just scatter rune coins onto hero pass and allow people to buy the premium version of the pass with rune coins does this concept feel sound familiar because it is because every goddamn battle pass i've ever seen from call of duty to fortnite to albion to destiny 2 does this actually wait destiny doesn't do that but um they include their premium currency in the battle pass so if you need to change it so that um, what is it? What is it? It's like, um, how many bonds do you need to buy the damn pass? It's like four or something, right? Swap that for four bonds equivalent worth of, of rune coins. You can exchange a bond for 195 rune coins. So make the premium pass 750 rune coins to, to unlock. There you go. You buy four bonds, you exchange it, you buy the battle pass, you even got a little bit of rune coins left. If you want to be particularly scummy, then make it 800 rune coins and you technically need five bonds but don't actually do that because you're just gonna piss everyone off and then put the amount of rune coins needed to buy the battle pass plus 10 to 20 percent on the pass itself so if somebody really commits they sit down they play the game a lot you're getting the engagement you're looking for people are logging on and they're <gasps> shocker staying online because they want to progress through that pass whether it's fomo or whether they just want to play the game and they're making progress on the side they're playing, and they get enough rune coins to be able to buy the premium pass for the next season. Or, you know, let's say you got Joe Schmo. He didn't play enough. He got to level 56. He got like 40% of the rune coins that he needs to buy the next pass. The next pass comes out, and he goes, you know what? I'm going to play a lot more this time, so I'll go ahead and buy the coins I need to make the difference and then dump them in and buy the premium pass. Guess what? He's most one of two things is going to happen. He's either going to stick it out and play a lot, log a lot of playtime, log a lot of engagement, and finish the pass, get his coins back like he wanted, or he's going to give up around halfway again, and you still got his damn money. So you win regardless. You win no matter what. There's a reason everyone does this, and I'm not a marketing analyst. I'm just a marketing QA, but I've seen what works and I've seen what doesn't. And there's a reason everyone in the industry seems to be following the same pattern with their battle passes, except for Jagex. And look, this is before I get carried away any more than I already have. This is not a shot at the devs directly. Mod Doom, Mod Azena, I know you guys are watching this, probably because I've sent this to you and taped you to your chairs and forced you to watch it. But I love you. You know, do my wife thinks you're the British Ryan Seacrest. You know, this is not at you guys. This is not at the developers. I guarantee you, once this task was sent down to devs to start working on systems for it, to uh, animators and modelers to start putting together uh, cosmetics or even uh, or UI elements, any of this, all the way down to the QA testers who are making sure that it doesn't randomly bug out on you, I guarantee you, Devs were saying to themselves all the way down, people are going to hate this. This is going to go over like a fart in church. They're going to be pissed. 
I know it because I've done it. Uh, in my job, I've done the exact same thing. We have, you know, changes have come down, monetization changes have come down from the top, usually a price increase or whatever. And we've all said, dude, are people really going to want to pay for this now? This is getting ridiculous. So I understand. I'm not mad at you guys. You just did your job. I understand that. You're also the only people we can talk to. So you have to hear it. And I'm sorry. Uh, but, you know, I apologize in advance. If you take any of this personally, I'm sorry. That's not the intention. But holy f mother of God, this needs to change. This needs to change. Um, <clears throat> last point. Or not last point, but next point on the list. An interesting thing about the past. This is less about, like, more of the, um... This is less about a lot of the controversies around the past and stuff like that. And more about something I want to see from this this system moving forward that I think will help improve engagement. Which I feel is Jagex's best way to truly get uh, a bang for their buck. You need more players. You can't focus on just the whales. You need more players in your game engaging with it, paying for membership... If you want to improve um, your your uh, income flow and keep it consistent, so currently the Hero Pass, it uh, it progresses as you gain experience. It has like a set rate of progression based on you getting experience, and that's just a constant. That's something that's just always happening. So ultimately, if you're not just standing at a bank doing literally nothing, you are progressing in the pass. However, slowly, you get. More progress when you do things like kill bosses and earn marks of war. Uh, obviously, the daily challenges, but those are their own thing. I'm not going to include that. Um, there are some, like, notes that earn you more progress. I would like to see more iteration on that. D&Ds, the distractions and diversions. Those should give you more progress. If you decide, if you want, if if you're just, if you know, our our same little level, uh, little Joe Blow guy who got to level fifty, we use him again. He's walking through Draenor and he sees an evil tree, and he decides to interact. And you know, he he completes the evil tree D and D, and he loots the dead tree, and on top of everything else he gets, he gets a bonus chunk of hero points. That's what I want to see. For D and Ds, if you play a mini game on Spotlight, you should get bonus points. If if you're doing anything specific outside of just gaining experience and just training a skill, you should get more points. It should incentivize people to really push to play various aspects of the game, and and no no one. Uh, no one method should really be better than another. I don't want to make people feel forced like they have to go AFK Castle Wars, because let's be real, that's what you're going to go do. I don't want people to be feel forced like they have to go do every Cathixian Cache and every D&D &D as they see them. But they should be incentives that are on par with things like going and doing your Reaper task, or going and just grinding a boss, or going and completing a Slayer task. Uh, stuff like that should be rewarded beyond what the pass already does. And that alone, I feel, will help will help kind of alleviate some of the, the concerns that players have that this pass might actually take too long to complete. Granted, at the time of recording this, it's only been two days, so people don't really know for sure. It's just napkin math. It's just what they've been able to put together based on their uh, rates of return on Hero Pass points just playing the game currently and deal, uh, interacting with the daily challenges. Now, Jagex has gone and said that they do want to... They have plans to add more, like, unique tasks that pop up. So, let's say... Uh, let's say Vorkath comes out tomorrow, right? And they add a task that says, go get 10 kills on Vorkath and you'll get 5,000 hero points. That's five levels on the pass. Like, stuff like that that comes out and it's paired with what's relevantly, you know, what's relevant to the game right now. I understand those will come out and, you know, as as time progresses, you'll get a better idea of just how long the pass will take to do when you include those unique events. But what happens if the game is like on a bit of a dry spell, right? And there's not much relevant coming out. So these these uh I don't know uh what what should I call these? These um contextual tasks don't really happen. As often, like you know, let's say let's say uh, uh, Hero Pass Three is uh, just in the middle of a dry spell, and there's not nearly many as many tasks. So that pass just arbitrarily takes twenty percent longer 
than all the other ones because there wasn't many opportunities for contextual tasks. That's that's kind of a problem. Now, granted, Jagex could just make up any old thing um, and add tasks to it, and that solves that issue, but I think it's smarter to just reward players for playing. Um, technically, you're kind of breathing a little bit of life into to various things, like minigames might be a little more active for people who don't feel like bossing right now, uh, you know, a uh, pest control's on spotlight. Oh, I like that. I'll, you know, I'll go play a little bit of pest control, maybe rack up a couple bonus points to finish off this level before I log off for the night. Or, you know, just, hey, you know, the, the Githixian cash is in a couple minutes. I'll go do that, grab some extra points. I'm about to hit a divination level anyway. You know, stuff like that. Quests, too. I didn't, I don't, I don't think I brought it up earlier, but quests, obviously. Complete a quest get rewarded bonus points. Anything that you can think of that is an activity that is not just training. So I, you know, rattling them off again for my own sake too here. Uh, quests, D&Ds, uh, minigames, uh, minigame spotlights, I would say. Um, God, what else? Uh, bossing, obviously, Marks of War. I think it already currently does that. Completing Slayer tasks. Um, and you could argue that that's just training Slayer, but it really it is, but you know, why not incentivize that further? Hell, completing dungeoneering floors. Just an added bonus on top of just getting dungeoneering experience, because there are a few ways you can do that. Same with Slayer. Um, completing dungeoneering floors could offer extra um extra hero points. And it incentivizes people to broaden their horizons a little bit, but doesn't make them feel bad for not choosing any specific thing. Like, it doesn't force people like, I don't want to go do 100 hours of pest control. Well, you don't have to, because you can do something else that you like doing and still get a comparative amount of points. And at that point, I think I've said this pretty much three times now, so uh, moving on. I, I don't... I really don't know what else to say. Um, those are all my thoughts on the Hero Pass so far. Ultimately, like, ultimately, again, I think it's not bad. I personally think it's better than Yak Track was. It at least makes more sense than Yak Track did. Um, the daily tasks that they want to do, I would honestly be fine, or not the daily tasks, the buffs, I would honestly be fine with them completely scrapping that. Completely scrapping the buffs thing and then add those uh, little temporary enhancer things that we were getting during the Golden Cape event. The um, the ones that like, oh, increases uh, fletching things, incre increases invention perk procs. They're all little, little buffs, like increases the amount of respect you get at the Artisan's Workshop. Add those to the Battle Pass. Put those in there. Either put them in a shop that you can spend... Um, points on, like, let's say you replace the buffs with, uh, like, just these little, uh, generic, like, unattuned enhancer buff pad point things, right? So, instead of getting, oh, I, you know, I get 12 of the Zamorak damage reduction buffs, you get 12 of these undirected points, you can spend them on any one of the enhancers you want, or 12, any 12 of the enhancers you want. Something like that might not be a bad idea. It's, those enhancers are awesome. I would like to see them come back in the game somehow. And I think one of the buffs that the the Hero Pass has currently is just straight up one of those ripped straight up from one of those enhancers. I think it's the uh woodcutting invention perk one. Just do that instead. Um <laughs> I feel like that's and 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 uh, and you know, outside of that, I can't really suggest anything else because ultimately it's up to Jagex to make sure that these buffs do not uh, get out of hand. And if they do, I don't know what else to say. Like, don't do that. I, I <laughs> The hell else do you want me to say? Just don't do it, I guess. I can't give a suggestion outside of don't let it power creep out of hand. And I, outside of that, it's, it's, in their, it's in their ballpark now. It's, it's up to Jagex to not let it do that. And that's all I can say on that. Add rune coins to the damn hero pass. Merge oddments and rune coins. Let iron men get rune coins, and obviously limit. You know, don't let them spend any. You know, spend it on anything that would give them an unfair advantage. Obviously, in the same way the uh, uh, oddments work, but start to truncate some of the premium currencies we have because they, they feel like there's a. It feels like there's a lot of overlap that is completely and utterly unnecessary, and 
just, man, I mean, you're not going to listen to me. You're not. Uh, but get rid of some of the monetization methods that we have. Treasure Hunter needs to go. It's time. If you're going to do something like Hero Pass, you need to do it at the cost of Treasure Hunter. Hero Pass would be welcomed as one of the greatest updates in RuneScape history if it also came with the death of Treasure Hunter and 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 no weird replace not 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 some stupid squeal of fortune to Treasure Hunter BS. No, literally that monetization method is gone. It is not coming back. Remove it. Stop charging us for rune metrics. Stop charging us for things like bank boosters and ability bars. Stop locking so much of the game behind so many different goddamn methods of monetization. If you do that, something like the Hero Pass will not only be accepted, it'd be welcomed and it'd be successful. There are plenty of examples of games out there that do more with that than what Jagex is doing with everything that they've got going on currently. <sighs> All right, I've been yelling at this microphone for about 38 minutes now. I think I've said everything I'm going to say. Um, if you made it this far, thank you all so much for watching or listening. I don't <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, uh, yeah, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.